Hello, you're watching the Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at the headlines. US releases report on indigenous boarding schools. Israel retracts false claims in journalists' murder. El Salvador imprisons woman after obstetric emergency. Vanuatu seeks legal protection against climate change. The US government has released the initial findings of its investigation into indigenous residential schools. The Federal Indian Boarding Schools initiative was launched by Interior Secretary Deb Haaland in June 2021. The inquiry has so far identified 408 schools in 37 states and territories established from 1801 to 1969. 21 schools have been located in Alaska and 7 in Hawaii. Boarding schools were supported by federal funds, US-run tribal trust accounts and religious institutions. Over 50 marked and unmarked burial sites linked to boarding schools have been located. At least 500 Native American, Alaska Native and Native Hawaiian children died in 19 residential schools. The Interior Department has stated that the toll could reach the tens of thousands. Historian Preston C. McBride has estimated that the total number of children who died could be 40,000. The report has not detailed the precise causes of deaths. However, rampant sexual, physical and emotional abuse, disease and malnourishment are well documented. The federal inquiry is the first of its kind to look into the horrors of indigenous boarding schools in the US. The violent assimilation of children was part of the broader goal to dispossess indigenous peoples and steal their land. Police and the denial of food were used to forcibly seize children from their families. Indigenous children were subjected to systematic, militarized and identity alteration methodologies. They were prevented from maintaining cultural practices, faced severe punishment and were forced to perform manual labor. The report includes a series of recommendations for further investigation. Secretary Haaland has also announced a year-long tour to hear the testimonies of survivors. Thousands of Palestinians attended a state service for Shirin Abu Akleh in the occupied West Bank on May 12th. The renowned Palestinian journalist was shot and killed by an Israeli sniper on Wednesday. Abu Akleh was among journalists who were covering the occupation forces raid on Janine. She had been wearing a marked press vest and a helmet. Witness accounts and footage show that Abu Akleh was shot in the head in an area not covered by the helmet. Her colleague Ali Al Samudi was also wounded. As news of the murder spread, Israeli authorities started claiming that Abu Akleh was shot by Palestinian fighters. They added that confrontations had been taking place near the journalists. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett also shared a video to advance these false claims. It appeared to show Palestinian fighters firing in an alleyway in Janine. Verification has proved that the video was not from the area where Abu Akleh was shot. An investigation by the Israeli NGO Betzalem has also disproved these claims. Israel has now been forced to retract its statements. Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi stated later on Wednesday that it was unclear who had shot Abu Akleh. Israeli forces have said that she was around 150 meters away from the troops. They added that the elite Dufdevan unit fired shots in the direction where the journalists were positioned. Palestinian officials have rejected Israel's offer of a joint probe into the case, calling it an assassination. Instead, they have pushed for an international investigation. Abu Akleh's body has been taken to her family in occupied East Jerusalem and she will be buried on Friday. A court in El Salvador has sentenced a woman to 30 years in prison after she suffered an obstetric emergency. The 28-year-old woman has been identified only as Esme. The conviction was reported by the Citizen Group for the Decriminalization of Abortion, which was helping in her defence. Esme had suffered a health emergency in 2019 after which she sought medical care in a public hospital. Her health condition led to her going through a miscarriage. Esme was also arrested and placed under two years of pretrial detention. She was convicted of homicide and sentenced to jail on May 9th. The citizen group condemned the judge for giving greater weight to the version given by the prosecutor's office, which was loaded with stereotypes. Esme's conviction is the first of its kind in El Salvador in the past seven years. The country has enforced an absolute ban on abortions. 
This has also been used to punish people suffering from obstetric emergencies, miscarriages and stillbirths. 181 women have been prosecuted based on accusations of abortion in the past two decades. In 2021, the Inter-American Court of Human Rights recognized that an obstetric emergency was a medical condition. As such, it has not led to a criminal sanction. The ruling was related to a 2008 case of Manuela, who was sentenced to prison after an obstetric emergency. The court held that El Salvador had violated her rights. And finally, we look at Vanuatu's efforts to secure legal protections against climate change. In 2021, the Pacific country approached the International Court of Justice or ICJ. It asked the body to issue an opinion on the rights of present and future generations to be protected from the climate crisis. Specifically, what are the legal obligations of all countries to prevent and redress the impact of climate change? Vanuatu is among the countries who are the most affected by rising sea levels, cyclones, flooding and drought. The government has argued that the current levels of action and support for vulnerable countries in multilateral mechanisms are insufficient. Vanuatu's initiative will be put up for a crucial vote in the UN General Assembly this year. While the ICJ's advisory opinions are not binding, they carry legal and moral weight which can influence international law. They can also impact domestic and regional tribunals and courts. Vanuatu's plea will require 97 votes in the UN to proceed to the ICJ. It is being supported by the international legal team led by Guam-based firm Blue Ocean Law. Vanuatu has also been backed by 1,500 civil society organizations across over 130 countries. These include the regional offices of Climate Action Network, Oxfam, 350 and Greenpeace. Global South countries have been pushing for climate justice and equity. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.